the Liberty Theater was a big, mainly African American theater that actually was on the same site that the AT&T building is at, which is the current site of the mural. And you can kind of see like uh, show curtains and tassels, and you can see Bessie Smith dancing with another woman. She sold out that theater on my return trip to Chattanooga a long time ago, 1929, something like that, I wanna say. So she sold out the theater to white and black patrons, but um, majority black. Uh, but then she also had a poor man's performance, which was for like her friends and family and the people that really did adore her from Chattanooga. But what I hope for the mural is to explain what happened, what can happen, and to kind of reimagine a new 9th Street for MLK. And the best part about 9th Street was that, although it was like mainly a, a African American district, it was interracial through entertainment, culture, music. You know, it wasn't any kind of racial boundary towards exploring the downtown scene. Now, if you go other places, there were sit-ins and boycotts, but you can go to 9th Street to have a good time, black or white. My name is Regine McDavid. I'm a history major at UTC, and this is my senior year. Um, well, basically what I do for the project is work with the history element. I'm Hannah Hahn. I am a UTC historical intern. Um, I'm also a practicing artist. So um, being an art education major and a history minor, I think has helped me really understand this project in a way that a lot of people haven't been able to. So MLK Boulevard used to be called 9th Street. And 9th Street was, they say, the second most sustainable and thriving black communities in the whole country. They had tons of jazz clubs all down 9th Street. And so what jazz musicians would do and, uh, is they would travel from Harlem and then they would make their way down to the south and end up at Chattanooga. There's hundreds of people on the street, on, on, on 9th Street, going to businesses, going to grocery stores, going to, to jazz clubs, going to coffee shops and cafes. The dentist, the like, medical yeah. offices, yeah. newspapers. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it, it was a very like robust area of uh, community. There was real community there. There's a lot of uh, stories that are, uh, that people have that are not shared and is not documented. And having a mural like this gets to capture a sense of those stories, but we're losing that information. And um, you know, it's just because um, you know people didn't have the means to document, or this just wasn't uh, a, a subject matter of importance to, to document. And so uh, projects like this come in, and it actually you know takes that those little stories and information and put it in, onto a platform that's just so large that people want to want to know about it. I was working on a, a project at the. Um, on the Bessie Smith lawn. I was creating a sculptural piece uh, centered around the Hotel Martin. I went to the library to try to research it and there was nothing. I mean, just one article on, on the entire hotel. And so I, I, I went on Facebook and I tried to reach out, you know, through some forums to see if anybody had information. And I discovered that someone else in the past had been looking for information about the hotel and couldn't find anything. Night Street, it was the Bill Street of Chattanooga. But it, if you go to Memphis today, at nighttime, Bill Street comes to life. If that would have stayed the same way in the 1940s and 50s and it didn't start to decline towards the 60s and 70s, Atlanta wouldn't probably be the biggest music capital right next door because the music from the jazz that was coming through 9th Street, when it stopped flowing through there, it had to find somewhere else to go. Like So places started shutting down on 9th Street and places started to open up in Atlanta. At that time, Chattanooga had its own agenda. It was industrial. It was shutting down places, creating more jobs for certain places. It's really sad to hear that some of the businesses on there just, you know, didn't make it through the civil rights struggle. Like some places got burned down. There was lynching. There was murders. There, there was protests from the KKK, and then there was riots to respond to that. And you know, when you have that much conflict, a lot of things get destroyed in the way. We have three main themes in our mural, which are reimagination, reinvention, and reclaiming. And all of the symbols and the figures and the imagery you see in the mural tie back to those themes. So we're thinking about 
the building as a narrative object. Um, so what's the story that we want to tell? Um, and here, I, I think that presently what we've heard a lot about is how do we reconcile um, this place, especially ML King Boulevard, reconcile the past with the future. So the narrative across the building is is loosely chronological and it's loose intentionally so we do have moments where sort of past fuses with present. You can travel back in time or you can change direction and travel towards the future. We sort of have again loosely a history portion celebrating the heyday of, of 9th Street. Then you move around the building, you get towards uh, desegregation, present time, um, which is actually a, sort of a place of, of waiting after uh, what we've come to understood as something of a decline on the street. You'll also see a cable that is running throughout the mural, and at times the cable is made up of both black and white strands, and at times they're separate. And this represents the history of racial tension, and you'll see throughout the mural uh, flipping figures, for instance, that we think captures that spirit of turning and, and eagerness. However, that's coming from a past that's not all so rosy. So how, again, how do you reconcile the, the hopeful future with a complicated past? But also, how do you deal with the whole concept of gentrification? Like, how do you deal with like trying to make an area come back and rebuild and develop without it just becoming a rich white area and all the people who are living there are pushed out because they can't afford it anymore? Like, you know, the people locally on, on MLK, the hope is they really see reflected in this composition who they are, who they have been, and where they want to go. And that really is where the design was conceived from. Past, present, and future hopes. Um, and then the people who are looking into the area, a lot of, a lot of it is, is re identifying that this is an area that has historic value for the black community um, in profound ways. And uh, a lot of people don't know the rich history about central downtown Chattanooga. And it's something that we need to, we need to be attentive to in telling that story. So this will tell that story. So that's so for the black community, that's a huge thing. For the white community, it gives them um, an education about something that they need, they need to know about. It restores a sense of dignity to this area. Whereas a lot of people may see and think of these areas as depressed areas, but they're actually there's, there's a lot of dignity behind the history there, um, and a lot of hope in where that can go. Now the other thing is there's an economic component. Uh, this benefits Chattanooga and this area and how people will look at developing here. We don't want an old MLK region to be pushed out. We want there to be a growth of what's here with new uh, flavor added to that, new energy added to that. This mural is a, a way of hoping to preserve some of that spirit um, and maintaining that narrative for this region.